Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Vasudha Venugopal, and a big, massive political development today ahead of 2024 Lok Sabha elections. Four years after the Citizenship Amendment Bill was cleared by the Parliament, it has become a reality today. What does CAA do? It it was a political flashpoint in 2019. It is a flashpoint even today. Why? Because it grants Indian citizenship to non-Muslim minority communities from across the neighborhood uh, neighborhood countries of India, including Pakistan, Afghanistan, and also Bangladesh. Now, these communities could be Hindus, could be Mus uh, could be non-Muslims, basically Buddhists, Jains, Parsis, and also Sikhs. Now, this is a big ideological commitment uh, by the BJP. Yet another uh, tick in its whole list of manifesto that it has uh, fulfilled. It is also aimed at political gains for the BJP, specifically in the state of. Uh, uh, Bengal, where it is aiming to get at least 35 seats. The Namashudra or uh, the Mathua community is, is a community that has been wanting, has been demanding uh, CAA for many, many years now. Uh, this comes even in the wake of Sandesh Khali protests, where we saw a lot of SE women come out and protest against uh, sexual abuse. And the timing, the political timing of this cannot be, uh, you know, any more interesting because I'm coming to you live from the BJP headquarters, uh, senior leaders of the party and government, including Home Minister Amit Shah, uh, J.P. Nadda, who's the president of the party, Rajnath Singh, who's the defense minister, are actually inside deliberating on the second list of uh, the BJP that is expected in a day or two. The prime minister is expected uh, to come here anytime uh, uh, soon. Uh, the CAA has been opposed vehemently by the opposition. I remember when it was introduced in 2019, several opposition rule states actually brought in resolutions opposing it. In fact, TMC first questioned the delay in notification of the rules, but today Mamta Banerjee has come out and said that she will continue opposing this. Now, at a time when Pran Pratishta of the Ayodhya Ram Temple has happened in uh, you know, great grandeur, when there is a certain resistance amongst opposition parties to not be seen as appeasing Muslims, how is the politics of CAA going to play out? How is it going to get implemented? What kind of respite can persecuted Hindus from other countries actually get with this? We're going to discuss all of that uh, today. But first, to understand the politics of CAA and the importance of this announcement, let me go across to my colleague Akhilesh. Um, who will explain that to us. Well, this was very important promise which was uh, made in the BJP's manifesto in 2019. Just ahead of the earlier Lok Sabha elections, uh, BJP had said very clearly that those who had faced uh, uh, persecution in Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan, those minorities will be given citizenship of India and that actually created a lot of controversy when the CA bill was brought into parliament uh, and there were fierce opposition not only in parliament but also in the streets. There were mass protests uh, right from Delhi to Assam and West Bengal and Tripura and after that though the bill was passed and this uh, uh, this became an act the rules were never notified the act does not come into force till the rules are notified but today uh, the home ministry has notified all the rules related to uh, citizenship amendment act so now the act is uh, in fact uh, is uh, uh, is now implemented across the country and what will it mean it will mean that those who have come uh, to india uh, before 31st December 2014, uh, if they belong to Hindu, uh, Jain, Sikhs or Christians or Parsi uh, community, then they will be able to apply for the citizenship of India through an online uh, portal which has been activated now. The rules are notified and once uh, the application is submitted uh, through this uh, portal, uh, the respective district magistrates will go through this application and if they find it is in order, then they will have the power uh, to grant the citizenship to all those who applied for this purpose. And this, what will this mean? That those who have been living in India for the past uh, so many years, they will be able to get rights equal to what other Indian citizens get, like right to vote, right to contest election, and right to property, and all the right to jobs, everything they will get, and all the facilities which are extended to uh, Indian citizens will be extended to them also. It's a big step, but of course it's a political issue also, because BJP will say that it has fulfilled a promise which was made in 2019, and we have seen that how uh, opposition parties, especially uh, Trinamool Congress in West Bengal, opposed uh, the uh, Citizenship Amendment Act. Now this act coming into force, uh, this will of course become a big issue as far as West Bengal election uh, is concerned. And uh, uh, Mamta Banerjee has already made it very clear that she will not allow uh, this act to be implemented in her state. So we uh, have to see uh, what uh, action does she take next and how this is going to affect uh, the electorates in West Bengal. 
So that was my colleague Akhilesh uh, explaining to us the modalities and political significance of the Citizenship Amendment Act. Let me go across to my colleague Ratadeep from Guwahati. Ratadeep, the meaning of citizenship or Dharti Putra or the Aksomia sentiment actually means very different in Assam as, uh, as we understand it in other states. There have been large-scale protests uh, with respect to NR, um, CAA uh, you know, in Assam. So tell us, not with regard to NRC, so tell us uh, how is the state looking at this and what are different groups and especially oppositions uh, saying to this notification of rules? Well, the opposition has already uh, said that they are going to start protest against it. This comes ahead of the election. So for the opposition, this is perhaps a political folder as well, where they would like to corner the BJP-led government in Assam. And the opposition, remember, in Assam could not uh, you know, uh, strike a sheet-sharing deal. But on this issue, it seems that despite the opposition uh, fielding candidates against each other for the ensuing Lok Sabha election would be coming uh, perhaps uh, together or separately uh, protest in fact, the All Assam Students Union, which had spearheaded the NTCA protest in 2019, had once again given a call for protest. Some low-key protests have already started in parts of Assam, uh, but. Uh, in this last couple of years, there have been a lot of change in the uh, political uh, scenario and therefore many of the leaders who were uh, once leading right. uh, the protest are with the BJP. So therefore, uh, the BJP uh, perhaps will be able to handle it. But when it comes to Assam, remember, you already have 19 lakh people right. whose fate is stuck in limbo with the Assam NRC not uh, being notified right. as yet. So therefore, how CA uh, will be implemented would be one question. And remember, in Assam, the entire opposition to CA has been on the lines that uh, through the Assam Accord, there is a, already right. a cut-off date of uh, 1971 uh, for accepting who is a, a, a citizen of Assam and not. But CA uh, 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 you know, kind of dilutes that date to 2014. That has been the uh, you know, uh, principal right. uh, uh, reason of opposition by uh, civil society groups and uh, you know, opposition parties. So therefore, now we have to see how the civil society groups react to it. So politically tricky situa situation there. Thank you, Ratnadeep, for joining us. Let me go across to my colleague, Neeta, who joins us. Neeta covers the Home Ministry. Neeta, tell us, how is uh, CAA going to be implemented? Uh, see, Vasudha, the Home Ministry has clarified that everything is going to be online and online portal is going to be launched. Already the dry runs have taken place. The rules which are, have been notified are going to specify because, mind you, Vasudha, all those people who now would be granted citizenship of India do not have any kind of documentation. So the rules will specify that how you need to go about it, the steps, the specifics as to what all you need to upload, then only you would be able to get the citizenship. So the rules are very important. The Home Ministry would be has notified the rules uh, the dry runs have already taken place and adequate precaution has also been taken uh, you know by the ministry of home affairs as far as street protests are concerned we have already seen as ratandip was also mentioning that the director general of police and of assam has been tweeting about it and even the chief minister of assam has been saying that if protests are uh, are taken out in that state then action would be taken as per law uh, but mind you uh, as per the notification the six schedule uh, areas the tribal areas would not be affected so anybody who has been staying in these areas right. even if they manage to get citizenship they won't be right. able to stay in that area so they, 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 that's the kind of uh, you know surety as far as uh, the six schedule is concerned the home ministry has already pointed out that right. in the notification itself but rules are going to be very important uh, 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 but these are all those right. people Vasudha, so there's a process, who don't yes, have so document, a process document. That, that the people earlier you know the home ministry has yes the home right so there's a process that had that has to be followed thank you neeta for joining us with those details we also have a panel of esteemed guests joining us today rashdeep roy who's the bjp mp from silchar joins us rp singh who represents the bjp we also have amitabh tiwari who's a political strategist and mr tosifur rehman who represents the tmc joining us starting with you mr roy you and your family have worked very hard for uh, the citizenship amendment act you come from assam that's what makes it all the more interesting uh, you know tell us about the political significance of this uh, move today, sir, and how happy are you with this? Uh, look, uh, to answer your second question first, I am uh, very, very happy. I am indeed grateful to the Indian leadership of Bharatiya Janata Party and, of course, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji 
our home minister uh, sri amit bhai shah ji uh, our previous home minister rajnath singh ji the present chief minister of assam uh, dr himanto bishwa sharma ji and the previous chief minister of assam uh, shorbanando sonwal ji uh, to talk about the political significance it is very important for uh, all of us to understand that this is a civilizational issue our country was divided in 1947 the political leadership of our country the then uh, india and the then pakistan uh, in 1950 they came together the nehru liaquat pact was signed and in the nehru liaquat pact we said that the minorities of the respective country will be protected their rights will be protected their uh, safety and security in terms of life and property will be taken care of we have done our bit india uh, has done its bit and at that time uh, the then uh, cabinet minister dr shama prashad mukherjee had warned nehru ji saying that pakistan will not uh, keep up to its promise and he has been vindicated subsequently as we in our country have protected not only the minorities but if you go through the records you will find that the number uh, of the uh, citizenship their numbers actually uh, multiplied in india the minorities in india multiplied whereas the minorities in pakistan afghanistan and bangladesh their right. numbers dwindle and not just dwindle dwindle very drastically in pakistan and afghanistan and even in bangladesh so today what we have been saying from the days of mahatma gandhi right. jawaharlal nehru sardar ballabhai patel they will protect minorities who have not been able to do so and after 75 years it was left to the uh, you know uh, modi ji amit bhai ji uh to, right. to bring in citizenship amendment law in december 2019 and four years down the line we have seen this being uh, notified today so it is a very historic day as far as i talk personally right. my family is a persecuted family 47 my grandfather shifted in the dead hour of the night with a family of 12 people uh including five females we came here and since then we have been struggling and fighting right. for the rights of the minorities my father a two times mla from uh, from right. silchar was one of the leading lights behind citizenship amendment bill and i personally filed a case in the supreme court in the year 2012 which was a pil 20 hearings took place till right. the time modi ji came and we uh, passed it in the lok sabha in rajya sabha we did not have the numbers but in 17th lok sabha in december second week of december 2019 we discussed we right. got it passed in both the rajya sabha and the lok sabha and today after four years we are here i am greatly satisfied on on behalf of all the prosecuted right. people of our right. country especially coming from bangladesh pakistan and yes. india i am very so that, happy that's a big achievement sir leadership. thank you mr roy for uh, yeah, yes sir let me go across to the tmc spokesperson thank you mr roy for joining us uh, mr rahman you heard mr roy speak about this now this is a huge political uh, you know uh, significant uh, uh, move for the bjp that has been talking about its sincerity in fulfilling commitments especially with regard to the hindu population how do you see uh, you know this change the political discourse of 2024 sir bjp has been accusing tmc of muslim appeasement do you see uh, the polarization uh, aspect of 2024 increasing after the ca Uh, good evening, everyone. Well, well, I totally understand that he is very much fascinated with all the CA implementation and how it is going to issue. Now, that's the difference, you know. When we start and when it gets implemented, the whole issue starts there. I mean, in, you know, he was fascinated and he was giving all the rules and regulation what is going to happen. But Article Ten and the Eleven of the Constitution allow the Parliament to frame laws on citizenship, but those laws cannot be against the Constitution. Am I right? If I, am, I hope so. The CAA clearly defies the Article Six of the Constitution. The CAA 2019 does not use the term minority. Instead, it identifies six non-Muslim communities. The naming of the communities on religion basis actually goes against the establishment of the Constitution principle. I mean, how come they are so happy? And what is going to happen? What is the notification? And what is the implication? We want to know everything. You know, in the previous show also, I was hearing uh, R P Singh ji. The notification will come. I want to know what kind of notification, what kind of implementation, what is it going to benefit to the people of India who are staying as a refugee? Okay, They're let me let me let me let me take this benefit. question to R P Singh, who represents the BJP. Mr. R P Singh, how do you? How do you see Mr. Rahman's accusation that the problem actually begins with implementation? Because we have seen many Hindu families also being vilified when the NRC was implemented. So, how how is your party and the centre going to, you know, at least ensure that uh, this is not going to be another demonisation process? 
Well, first let me show you the picture here. If your cameraman can focus on this picture, this is how we are treated in Afghanistan. We can't read our text. We are not allowed to read our religious text, and we are thrown out with our religious text from that country. This is how our six came just recently also, and earlier also. And this is how they were thrown out of the country. So please, sir, I please. Sir, you already, you already asked so much the debate. You are not, you are not prepared for anything, sir. You just want to okay. impose just before election. You want to make it an eye wash, nothing else. Okay, okay, Mr. You Singh, let, let him finish this. Yes. Mr. Mr. Yes, Mr. Rehman, let, let Mr. Singh finish. Yes, sir. Mr. Singh, please go on. The problem with the uh, TMC is that they think uh, minority politics or, or they look with a Muslim... No, sir, it is not about minority politics. It's about lies and the truth and the fact which will come. You don't have nothing to say. I mean, your silence is self-speaking that Mr. you are not ready to... Let Mr. Singh this. speak. Aap ready nahi let hai Mr. Singh finish his point, point, Mr. Rahman, please. Haan. Mr. Singh, finish your point. Shall I? Sir, boliye, Mr. Singh, please speak. Please continue. So, it's clear yes, sir, that, please, sir. that uh, uh, TMC can't see beyond uh, appeasement of a vote bank and then they're doing it. This within the view, I mean, purview. Here's a picture of Hazi Nurul Islam. Okay, man who was behind 2010 Degang riots. So, I mean, this is today what they have done. This is a picture of Shiani Ghost tweet, which has covered the uh, here. Can I? Can, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who has covered the uh, link? Covered the uh, link with the uh, condom. I mean, this just shows how far they can go. Sir, even our uh, even our honourable prime minister was accused with Godra right. What what you want to prove with this? Okay. आप implication के ऊपर बात करिए ना. How you want to implicate? Okay. Let this? me let me go across to Amitabh Tiwari. Ma'am, I uh, you want to debate? Thank, thank you, ma'am. I'm going out of the debate because you don't want us to be in the debate. I mean, there's no way to conduct a debate. Man, I want now. No, no, there's no way to conduct a debate. Wasuda, is this the way way you conduct the debate? You are going to use the attack. Okay, Mr. Tiwari. You give me yes. You give me Ms. a simple basic reason why you want to Ms. do this Mr. before election. Mr. Rehman, you'll have to, you you'll have to, you'll you'll have to respect others, sir. Tommy, can I please. complete, ma'am? Ma'am, can I complete? Rehman, you never you no, no, I want, I, no, no, I want to allow this debate yes, to continue Mr. like Singh. this. Yes, yes, Mr. Mr. Singh, just finish your point. No, ma'am. Just finish your point, Mr. Singh. Ma'am, there's no way to Ms. heckle. Rehman, I mean, you are, I, I, is this a debate or this is a heckle show? You to our debates if you keep talking. You cannot heckle somebody. Yes. Yes, sir. Mr. Singh, finish your point, sir. We were twenty percent in Mr. Pakistan. Mr. Singh, please the, finish your point, please. At the time speak. of independence, we were twenty percent. Today, we are less than two percent in Pakistan. Our women are being taken, raped, and they are forcibly converted. Our men has been forcibly converted. See the population in India. Had the Muslim been not been taken care, had the Muslim population not grown here, their six Hindus has been prosecuted. I mean, they are ongoingly our temples, our gurdwaras. There, there are bullets being shot at temples in Gurdwara, Afghanistan. Our right. Gurdwaras have been shot. Bangladesh, the temples have been burnt. Right. So, where, which other right. country do we look forward to? Which other country do the minorities look forward to? And and they are trying to yes, create yes, a Hindu-Muslim yes, issue. Give me a second, ma'am, please. Persecution of religious minorities. No, no, give me another second. Yes, it's sir. not a Hindu-Muslim yes, issue at all. Because I'm running is, out of time. Not because yes. Muslims are not being prosecuted. If they are there, then it's their country. They are in majority there. And this was part of the Liaquat Ali Nehru. Pack, Man, but they have gone back on the pack. Okay, let let me get Mr. Tiwari to speak on this. I get your point, Mr. Singh. Persecution of minorities is an important, uh, you know, it, it is a big challenge in our neighbourhood. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tiwari, how do you look at this, sir? And and do you see the discourse of 2024 changing, especially with the with the notification of the CAA rules? See, this has a humanitarian angle uh, because of granting citizenship to Hindus and other minorities who have faced religious persecution. However, it has a political angle also, because when it was announced in 2019, there were, there were a lot of protests in uh, Bengal, Assam, and some states of Northeast. Now, West Bengal this time is, is facing the mother of all battles, where both the parties are fighting a very tight or a close contest. And this, after a series of incidents in West Bengal, like the Sandesh Kali, corruption charges against MLA's MPs, ED action, etc., is going to further consolidate votes on both the sides of the spectrum and we could see uh, things uh, getting very heated up in Bengal and Assam for the months to come.
and we'll have to wait and see how this pans out bjp of course will try to uh, say that they have fulfilled a long pending promise which was there in their manifesto other parties like the tmc and congress are likely to oppose especially in the north in right. north east and the eastern part and the bjp sees east eastern region as a, 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 a as an expansion of footprint right. because that's key to their uh, mission 370 or 400 whatever we call it right. for 2024 right so so several angles there humanitarian angle political angle ideological commitments yes uh, thank you so much mr singh mr tiwari and mr rahman for joining me on this debate time for a short break we'll be back in a bit